Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're going to be talking about solving systems of linear and quadratic equations. Now, we're both going to do this algebraically and graphically. And then after we do it through graphing, I'm going to show you how you can also do it on your calculator. So let's dive right in. So remember, a system is two equations. One will be linear. So in this example, this first one's our linear equation. Remember, linear equations are to the power of one. Your highest exponent on a variable would be one. And then a quadratic equation, which in this case would be our second equation. So its highest power on a variable is two. What I want you to recognize that this is y equals 4x plus 1, and this is y equals x squared plus 4. So if y equals this, and y also equals this, then these two things equal each other. So that's an equation that we can write. So we can write 4x plus 1 equals x squared plus 4. If this equals this, and this equals this, then this equals this. Now at this point, I want to get everything together on one side of the equation. A lot of students are tempted to say, okay, well let's subtract x squared and move it over here. Technically, you, you can do that. I don't recommend it. I always recommend keeping the x squared positive just to think just to keep things you know, clean and simple. All right, so move the 4x by subtracting it over here. Whatever is the x squared side, you wanna to go to that side. Now let's see, so we've got at this point just a one equals x squared, and no like terms here I can combine, so it would just be negative 4x plus four. We always want to write our answer in standard form, okay, constant last. Of course, I don't want this to be equal one. I want it to be equal zero. So now I need to subtract one from each side. So I've got zero equals x squared minus four x. Four minus one is positive three. So now I've got this all combined together into one quadratic equation that I can solve. Okay, so let's go ahead and label my A, which will be one, my B, which would be negative four, and my C, which would be three. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say quadratic formula, you definitely wanna stop and go watch my video on using the quadratic formula before you watch this video. Remembering my quadratic formula, remember that it is negative B, negative, negative four, plus or minus square root of B, so negative four, squared, you must have parentheses around that negative four. If you do not, your answer will be wrong. Okay, so negative four squared, b squared, minus four times a times c, all over two times a. Remember when we use the quadratic formula, we first simplify what we have underneath the radical. So let's use our calculator to do that, save some time. Negative four squared must have those parentheses, minus four times one times three. All right, and we get four. So that means we've got negative times a negative, remember that's a positive four, plus or minus the square root of four, all over two times one is two. Okay, so can we simplify square root of four? Does that reduce, is that a perfect square? Let's check. Square root of four, and we get two. We get a nice whole number. So that reduces really well to four plus or minus two all over two. So this is technically two separate statements written in one. We have our four plus two over two, that covers that positive. And then we also have our four minus two over two. Okay, so let's solve both of these and figure out what is x. So four plus two is six. Six divided by two is three. And then we have four minus two, which is two. Two divided by two, which is one. 
Okay, so we know that our solutions here is x is the, could be 1 and 3, okay? So um, here's the thing though, we're not quite done because it's great to know that x is 1 and 3, but I want to know the system. I want to know the actual intersecting points, right? I don't want to know just the x values. I want to know the y values as well. So we're going to want to take each of these x values back up to an original equation and figure out what will be my corresponding y values, okay? I can pick either equation. I would pick the top one just because I don't want to deal with a square. I'd rather just deal with a linear equation. So one at a time, I'm going to plug in each of these x values. So first we'll do y equals 4 times x, but first we're going to do 1. 4 times 1 plus 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So I know that one of my solutions is 1, 5. I'm going to write my official answer just, I don't know, right down here. So my final answer, one intersecting point would be at 1, 5. And the other intersecting point, I know the first, the x would be 3, but let's figure out what the y would be. So I would go back to the same equation, y equals 4 times 3 plus 1. 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 plus 1 is 13. 3 comma 13. So those are my two intersecting points. That is most definitely the long way around. Solving algebraically is a longer method to get your answer, but it's something you do need to know how to do. And the reason why you need to know, some people might say, well, I'm always going to have a calculator with me. Well, what if you get in a test, though, at some point in your math career and it's calculator inactive and they ask you to solve system of linear and quadratic equations? You've got to know how to do it by hand as well. I would never use this unless I have to. It's good to know how to do it. Let's get to the shorter methods. In terms of manually graphing this, which we could do, okay, and I'm going to show you an even shorter way in a minute, but let's go ahead and use our graphing calculator to help us. First, I need to graph this first line, and then I will graph the second line. Now, the first line, I actually, I don't even need the calculator. I could graph this one by hand, right? It's just a linear equation. So, remember linear equations, this is y equals mx plus b. Remember, b is my starting point. So it starts, my y-intercept starts at positive 1. And then my slope tells me to move, it's negative 1. So that means I move down 1, right 1. All right, down 1, right 1. And I keep this pattern up, down 1, right 1. So there's my linear equation. Now for my quadratic equation, I definitely want to bring the calculator in to help me. I would go to my y equals and type in negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, now let's go to second graph to look at my table of values. Now I want to pick good values. I definitely want to choose the vertex, which remember that's a mirrored image, right? Everything above it and below it is mirrored so it creates this kind of cool pattern effect so you want to definitely have the vertex in there which falls at one two let me go ahead and plot that one two and then we'll plot around it so then i've got zero positive one zero positive one right there and negative one negative two negative one negative two and then we'll plot a little bit above the vertex. Two, one, three, negative two. All right, and we'll connect those dots in our parabola form. We want to physically see where I've got my linear equation, I've got my quadratic equation, where do they intersect? Well, I can clearly see that they intersect right here at 0, 1, 
and they intersect right here at 3, negative 2. Okay, so those are my two intersecting points. Now, it's important to note that these could intersect twice, like we see here. It could only intersect once, like what if I had a line and it just barely touched one point and then it just kept going. Okay, so that would be an example of if they only had one solution. Or my linear line could be totally up here and not ever intersect that parabola. And that would be no solution. So you can have lots of different types of answers within those three parameters. One solution, no solution, or two solutions. Those are your those are your three options. Okay, now just a trick to quickly do this on the calculator. I showed you the longest way, the second longest way, and now I'm going to show you the shortest way. Okay, so assuming you do have a graphing calculator, first thing you want to do is clear it. So I've got a bunch of stuff in here from before. Second plus seven one two. Go ahead and clear it. I would want to go to my y equals and type in both of these two equations. Now, of course, I need to make sure that they are both set equal to y first, and they are. So I can go ahead and plug them in. The first one says negative x plus 1. The second one says negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. And my order doesn't matter here, right? I could have done this one first and that one second. It doesn't matter. Let's graph and let's look at these. Okay, there's my linear and there's my quadratic. And notice it looks just like what I, what I graphed here. So we'd be able to get kind of like a shortcut to that picture. In order for me to find those intersecting points, because I would want to know what those points are, I just have to hit second, trace, five. And notice how one shows up right there a little I think of it as like a blinking spaceship. It shows up right on the intersection. All I have to do is hit enter three times. One, two, three. And it's going to tell me the intersection is at zero and one. And isn't that what I got? Zero and one. But now I want to know the other intersection because there are two. I can clearly see two here. So I just do it again. I go second, trace, five. This time I'm going to take my spaceship over to the other intersection, right there. And just get it as close as you can. One, two, three. And see, I see my other intersection falls at three, negative two. Three, negative two. Here's one for you guys to try on your own. I've given you a linear equation, y equals three x minus one, and a quadratic equation, y equals negative x squared plus 4x plus 1. Whether you want to do it algebraically, graphing it manually, or graphing it on the calculator. And I will tell you there are two for this one. What are the two intersecting points for these two equations? I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.